Hey gang, Sparky here. I often get questions from Labs members after some of my videos asking me why my computer behaved in a certain way or didn't. And uh, a lot of times it comes down to system settings. So I thought I'd share some of my system settings with you. I've got several of these I'd like to go through, but the desktop and dock settings has uh, caused several questions recently. So I thought I'd focus on that one today. So here I am in the Mac in my system settings. I'll just start at the top and work my way down. The dock here is over on the left side currently. You can change it to the right or to the bottom. Uh, I actually think it looks the best on the bottom, but the problem for me is I keep my um, iPad right down below here and I use universal control to get to it. And if I uh, mouse down here, I hit the dock or I hit the iPad, it gets confusing. And uh, so I keep it on the left. Uh, I actually think it is probably better here anyway because vertical space is at such a premium on your Mac. If you put it at the bottom, it's using up some of that space. Whereas, you know, on the left and right side, it almost doesn't matter. And I was going to like clear this out before I started recording, but I just wanted to show you, you know, on a typical day, I've got a lot of apps running. And when I see that there's all these apps with these black dots here, um, usually the ones below the line are the ones that I don't regularly run. Like I was working on an Apple script and I was doing some Xcode stuff. And I, so I'm playing with a bunch of different things today, but when it gets as bad, I'll just hit the uh, command tab. And if you hit the Q button, as you go through that, you can delete some of those apps. Like, let's see here, uh, audio hijack, one password, card hop, zoom. I'm going to just go through and close. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just hitting the Q button and each one I close just, you know, frees up some memory and, otherwise makes things a little better. Whoops, I was working on something. I had to go back to my old presentations field guide and it opened up an iBooks. That's crazy, right? Don't save. No, we're good. Delete. All right, so uh, that cleans things up over here. As you see, I worked through that, but that's what I'm doing with the doc. I've got the genie effect turned on because I often have a lot of them here and it's easy to see. Uh, you can also make changes to the dock by right clicking on the little vertical bar in the dock and it gives you a lot of the same settings. Uh, I actually keep my dock showing when I'm working, but whenever I am um, doing a field guide or recording videos for you, I usually hide it. You can do that by right clicking and turning on hiding that way. Then you can bring it back doing the same thing. You can also do it over here. Um, let's see here, dock hiding right here with this setting. So you can see I can just turn it off and on. Um, I have uh, connected a keyboard shortcut to it. For me, it is Control F11. And when I hit that, it makes it come and go. In fact, let me show you how I did that real quick. And you'll see when I did that, it, it killed the Clean Shot X thing where it hides the stuff on my desktop. So this is a little messy here, but you guys are in the labs, you get it. Uh, but let me get it to show you what the point here. I'm gonna go over to keyboard settings and uh, keyboard shortcuts. And there it is right there under Launchpad and Dock. Turn Dock hiding and off. I just added Control F11 to that to make it easier to hide it because I'm toggling it so often when I record. Um, I can also add that to a Keyboard Maestro script now too, just to hit the Control F11 uh, keystroke to hide it automatically as I'm setting up to record. Uh, just out of curiosity, I, you know, I'm using CleanShot X to hide the stuff on my dock when I record. Well, I've also added a keyboard shortcut to that, and that is Control uh, F10, and that should make it go away. There we go. Um, so I can now continue on down through this. Let's go back up to the uh, to the dock and desktop settings. Uh, I minimize windows into application icons that pushes them into the dock. I don't do that, but you can turn it on here automatically hide and show the dock. I was just showing you that animate opening applications. That's where it kind of zooms in. I like that. I like anything that's a little whimsical with the Mac. Uh, you should make your computing fun. So I keep that turned on. Uh, if you have no soul, you can go ahead and turn it off. That's okay. Uh, show indicators for open applications. That's these little dots. I actually do like to see those. Uh, I have some apps here that are resource heavy. Uh, Basecamp, I'm looking at you. Uh, so I like that dot off on that one, except I, except when I really need to be in it. Um, so uh, having those dots lets me know what's going on that way. Uh, okay, show recent applications in doc. Yes, I have. go ahead and turn that on. Although my dock is so full right now, it wouldn't really matter. 
um, uh, automatically hide and show the menu bar. I got several questions on that one. I had a screenshot or I was doing some stuff with Fantastical and my menu bar was there on a full screen and someone wrote in saying, well, hey, wait a second, how are you seeing your menu bar in a full screen app? Well, that's this setting. The default is uh, to turn off the menu bar in full screen apps. I think that's silly. It should be never. You should always see the menu bar. Even in full screen apps, it gives you the time and all your little menu bar stuff. But if you want, you can leave that default behavior on. Or if you're really crazy, you could just always hide the dock. Um, or the menu bar. And if you turn that on, by the way, it doesn't entirely go away. If you hold up there, it'll show up. But I don't know why you would do that. It takes such little space up there. So I never hide the menu bar. Uh, Windows and apps prefer tabs and opening new documents. I do that. That means when I open uh, new documents in, in documents that support tabs, it ad automatically includes them. That helps me avoid a bunch of windows, like when I'm doing work in pages and some of the applications that support that. Uh, ask to keep changes when closing documents. No, it's always saving anyway. I don't think you need that. And it's just another kind of like uh, hurdle you've got to jump over when you close an app. I don't like that. Close windows when closing an application. Of course, I don't want windows populating my screen that I don't need. Stage manager is another discussion entirely. I think I may do a video for you on this if there's enough interest, but uh, I got pretty good at stage manager, but ultimately I don't see that I'll be using it regularly. Uh, I just feel like the uh, window management and setup systems I use are better than Stage Manager. Uh, so that's kind of my feeling on it. And there was too many little friction points. Like when you open one app, the other one closes. And I felt like I was spending a lot of time fiddling with it. So ultimately, I stopped using it. But uh, it's an interesting feature. I think it's good uh, for a lot of people. And I definitely have some power tips on it. So if you guys really want to hear about that, let me know. And I'll do a video on that. Default web browser, Safari. Uh, mission control, uh, because I use multiple spaces, and that's another video for you someday, but for me, I've got, you know, screen one is comms, uh, then I have a dedicated screen for my calendar. This is the working screen where I, I do uh, production work. This is the uh, the maintenance screen, you know, like a finder and stuff goes here. I got a little R2-D2 here because, you know, like I'm working on the Mac, like R2 would fix a spaceship. This is where I fix my Mac. And desktop four right now is the screen where I do all the recording for the Obsidian Field Guide. It's got the nice colored background there to make that look good. Uh, but I'm going through those all the time. So yeah, uh, mission control is important to me. Uh, I use that. Um, but there's a button here that people click on that is crazy. In fact, Apple turns it on by default, and I don't know why. Automatically rearrange spaces based on the most recent use. What that means is Whatever space you've used the most recent uh, becomes the next one to the right. So they're constantly reshuffling. And it's like every time you look at your plate, all the food is in a different place. It's nuts. I don't know why that's turned on. So I turn that off. Uh, when switching to an application, switch to the space with the open windows. I absolutely use this. Let me give you an example. Uh, I'll go over here and I'll open Finder. Open a new window in Finder, and so there, uh, there is um, an open window in Finder. And let's say I'm going to put this in to uh, whatever you know. Uh, I have Finder locked to the space, so then when I open Finder, it jumps to that space for me. So you can see it just jumped over to that space. This really works great for me with my comm screen. So if I hit Mail, it jumps to that space. Uh, this is just a really nice way for me to keep my Mac in the right space at the right time. Uh, the way you do that is over in the uh, dock, you just right click on it and go to options and say, assign this app to this de desktop. And I have assigned utility apps to this desktop, production apps to this desktop, and all my comms apps to the comms desktop. But that's got all my email open in it right now, so I'm not going to go over there for you. Um, you can group windows by application. That means when you go into, you know, the mission control view, it groups them. I like that. It takes less space on the screen and displays have separate spaces. So if you have two screens, you'll want to turn that on. Although I don't have two displays, I've got it turned on anyway. And finally in here, uh, there's some shortcut stuff. Uh, uh, mission control is control arrow up, which I have found works for me. Application windows, control arrow down and show the desktop is just a plain old F11. And those are the default um, keyboard shortcuts, and I've got used to those, so I don't need to worry about it. That's cool. And then 
Hot Corners is a feature where you can put your mouse in a corner and turn something on. I've gone up and down on these over the years. I like them to a certain degree, but sometimes if they trigger accidentally, I end up turning them off. So my current state of Hot Corners is the top left is Mission Control. So I'll just go up there and then see it goes to Mission Control and then I can go and do mouse stuff. So that seems to work for me. And then the Apple Quick Note feature is lower left on the iPad. So I put it lower left here as well and I can add new uh, notes with that. I don't have anything turned on over here, but you can see there are options if you want. Um, something you can do with these is add modifier keys too, if you want. So to do that, you just click on it, but then you hold down the modifier key, like I'm holding down the controls uh, here. And if I hit, you know, control desktop, now when I go up into the corner, it doesn't trigger my desktop. But if I hold the control key down, go in the corner, then it does. What That makes accidental triggering easier. So hopefully that helps. But there's a lot of stuff you can see in here. I've customized this quite a bit, as you can see. And uh, you should too, you know, make your Mac dance the way you want it to dance. But that explains why some of the weird stuff on my Mac happens during these videos. I hope you learned at least one tip in this video that can help you customize your experience. As always, thanks for your support in the Mac Sparky Labs.